from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston. It's the Cube, covering IBM Think. Brought to you by IBM. Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante from the Cube, and you're watching our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of IBM's Digital Think 2020 event. And we are really pleased to have Guillermo Miranda here. He's the Vice President of Corporate and Social Responsibility. Guillermo, thanks for coming on the Cube. Absolutely. Good afternoon to you. Good evening, wherever you are. Yeah. So, you know, this notion of corporate responsibility, uh, it really has gained steam lately. Um, and of course, with COVID-19, companies like IBM really have to take the lead on this. The, the tech industry actually has been one of those industries that has been less hard hit. Uh, and IBM as a leader, along with some other companies, are really being looked at a step up. So talk a little bit about social responsibility in the context of the current COVID climate. Absolutely. Now, thank you for the question. Look, first, our responsibility is with the safety of our employees and the continuity of business for our client. In this frame, what we have done is see what is the most adequate areas to respond to the emergency of the pandemic. And using what we know in terms of expertise and the talent that we have is where we decided to go first with high performance computing. IBM designed and produced the fastest computers in the world. So Summit and a consortium of, of uh, providers of high performance computing is helping on the discovery of vaccinations and drugs for the pandemic. The second thing that we are doing is related with data and insights. We own the weather company, which is a 80 million people connected to check the weather every morning, every afternoon. So through the weather company, we are providing insights and data about county level information on COVID-19. The thing that we are doing is we are offering some of our products for free. Watson citizen chatbots to inform about what is adequate, what is needed in the middle of a pandemic if you are a consumer. We are also helping with our volunteers. IBM volunteers are helping teachers and school districts to rapidly flip into remote learning and get used to the tools of working on a remote environment. And finally, we have a micro-volunteering opportunity for anybody that has a computer on an Android phone. So with the work community grid, you can help with the discovery also of drugs, uh, drugs and vaccinations for COVID-19. Well, that's great. Those are four awesome initiatives. I mean, you can't get the vaccine you know, fast enough. Getting good quality information in the hands of people in this era of fake news, also very, very important. Students, you know, missing out on you know, some of the key parts of their learning. So remote learning is key. And I love this idea of sort of kind of micro crowdsourcing solutions, really kind of opening that up. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, we'll have some big wins there, Guillermo. Thank you for that. Um, I want to ask you, you know, people talk about blue collar jobs. They talk about white collar jobs. You guys talk about new collar jobs, you and, and, and others. What, what are new collar jobs and, and why are they important? So look, in this data, digital, artificial and intelligence driven economy, it's important not to have a digital divide between the, the haves and the have nots on the foundational skills to be operational in a digital economy. So new collar jobs are precisely the intersection of the skills that you need to operate in this digital driven economy with the basic knowledge to be a user of technology. So think about a cybersecurity analyst. You don't need a master degree in industrial engineering to be a cybersecurity analyst. You just need the basic things about operating an environment on a security control center, for instance. Or talk about blockchain, or talk about software engineering, full stack developer. There are many roles that you can do in this economy where you don't need to have a full three year, four year degree on a university to have a decent paying job for the digital economy. 
these are the new collar jobs. And what we are attempting to do with the new collar job definition is to get rid of the paradigm that the university degree is the only passport to a successful career in the marketplace. You can start in different rounds having the opportunity to have a job in a high-tech area, not necessarily with a PhD in engineering, as I said, is something important for us, for our clients, and for the community. Yeah, so that's a very interesting concept that a lot of us can relate to, to go back to our you know, university days. Many of the courses that we took, we shook our heads and said, okay, why do I have to take this? Okay, I get it. Well-rounded, liberal arts uh, experience, so that's all good. But it's almost like you're applying that the notion of, of, of you know, specialization that we've known for years, like for instance, in, 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 in vocations, uh, auto mechanic, uh, woodworking, et cetera, uh, 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 plumbing that have really critical aspects of the economy, applying that to the technology business. I mean, it's genius and very simple. Absolutely. Look, this is the reinvention of vocational education for the 21st century, where you continue to need a plumber, to continue to need a hairdresser, but also you need people that operate the digital platforms and are comfortable with these environments and they don't need to pass at the beginning through full university. And it's also the concept that we have divided secondary education, high school from college, university, I said, like a Chinese wall, here is high school, here is college. No, there can be a clear integration because you can start get ready without finishing high school yet. So there are several paradigms that we have evolved in the previous century that now we need to change and be ready for this 21st century digital driven economy. Yeah, very refreshing. I mean, really about time that this thinking came into practice. Talk about P-Tech. How does P-Tech fit in to acquiring these skills? And, and maybe you could give us a sense as to the sort of profile of the folks that are, you know, uh, uh, and their backgrounds and, and, you know, give us a sense as to, and add some color to how that's all working. Absolutely. So look, the P-Tech model started 10 years ago in a high school in New York City in Brooklyn. And the whole idea is to go to our underserved area and create a ramp on to success that will help you to first finish high school. Finishing high school is very important and has a lot of connotations for you. And then at the same time, start getting an associate degree in an area of high growth. The component on the third component is the industry partner. The, an industry partner that works with the school district and the community college in order to bring the knowledge of what is needed in that community in order to create real job opportunities. And we will send you the people and then you will use it. No, we need to work together in order to train the talent for the future. And you just go to the middle age and the guilds were the ones that were preparing the workers. So the industry was preparing the workforce. Why in the 20th century we renounce to that? Having real relevant skills starting in high school, helping the kids to graduate with a dual uh, diploma, high school, college, and practice in real life, what is to be in a workplace environment. So we have more than 220 schools in this school year. We have more than 150,000 kids in 24, uh, in 24 countries already working through the P-Tech model. Love it, and really scaling that up. So let's say I'm an individual, I'm a young person, I'm from a diverse background. You know, maybe my, my parents uh, uh, came to this country and I'm a first generation American, or of course, it's not just the United States, it's, it's global, but let's say I'm from a, from a background that's less advantaged. How do I take advantage? How hard is it for me to tap in to something like P-Tech and get these skills? Well, first, one of the characteristics of the model is this is free admission. So there is not a barrier of entrance. If you're a school district, 
offers PTEC, you can apply to PTEC and get into the PTEC model education without any barrier, without any exam. And the second thing that you need to have is curiosity, because it's not going to be the typical high school where you have math, science, gym, whatever. This is more of an integration of how a, the look of a career will be in the future and how you have to start understanding that there are drivers into the economy that are fast tracks into well-paid jobs. So curiosity on top of being ready to join a PTEC school in the school district where you live in. That's great, Guillermo. Thank you for, for sharing that. Now, of course, corporate responsibility, you know, that's a that's a wide net. This is kind of one of your passions. Uh, um, I'll leave a, I'll give you the last word to kind of where you see this whole corporate responsibility mo movement going generally and specifically within IBM. Well, I think that this whole pandemic will just accelerate some of the clear trends in the marketplace. Corporate responsibility cannot be an afterthought as before in, in the 80s or 90s. I will put a foundation, I have a little of profits that are left, and then I will distribute grant. And that's my whole corporate responsibility approach. Corporate responsibility needs to be within the fabric of how do you do business. It has to be embedded into the values of your company and your value proposition. And you have to serve those projects with the same kind of skills and technology, in the case of IBM, that you do for your commercial engagement. And this is what we do in IBM. We help IBMers to be helpful to their communities with the same kind of quality and platforms that we offer to our clients. And we help to solve one of the most complicated problems in societies through technology, innovation, time. Love it. Guillermo, thanks so much. Uh, you're doing great work. Really appreciate you coming on theCUBE and sharing with, uh, with our audience. Congratulations. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. You're very welcome. And thank you for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. You're watching our continuous coverage of IBM Think 2020, the digital version. Keep it right there. We'll be right back right after this short break.